Isik have been back in the mix with mixed results. Obviously, I feel like it's been that long since I've talked about them as they sort of increasingly become irrelevant. Isik have announced a bunch of suspensions and a bunch of other things, but Isik is the Esports Integrity Commission. They're meant to preside over all of esports, and if people do match fixing or cheating or they don't conform to other tournament expectations or rules they are the third party body that will arbitrate and issue a penalty that will then be upheld by the developers and by the leagues of course obviously as we know what's ended up happening is that uh, ESIC have sort of had a number of high profile mistakes and misjudgments and ultimately, whenever they've been challenged, they folded and they haven't stood tall on their uh, penalties that they wanted to issue. You know, this most notably happened with Hunden, but it's also happened with Peacemaker, happened with a number of the coaches as well. So they've lost a lot of their authority, if indeed they ever had any authority. Because you have to be able to go through and follow up on the punishments that you say you will issue and once the illusion is shattered that actually you don't have the stomach for a long or finances for a long drawn out legal battle you can pay anyone you know a couple of hundred to fucking represent you as a lawyer and write you a letter and if that's all it's going to take to get you to walk backwards and rescind your punishments then i don't really know what ESIC is it's certainly not a governing body it's something and it's certainly not an investigatory body either by the looks of it because it doesn't seem to have any special powers that somebody like myself wouldn't have you know i can follow up on rumor and conjecture and speculation i can interview people i can use testimony they should be able to go to betting sites and say look did this come place a bet I think you use this account, and they go, can't show you, GDPR. What are we even up against? Seems like, as as I wrote in an article on Deserto back in 2022, I just don't think we're ever going to solve the esports match-fixing problem. I think the match-fixers have won, and the only way you're going to catch them is if somebody like me dedicates months and months and months of their life to getting individuals and even then all i can do is present evidence and the community will go i like that player and richard lewis tweeted something that makes me think he's a man child so even though he has a flawless reporting record i think he's lying probably because he hates the player because he's an old bit of twisted man and there you go and that's what you're left with so it's just a waste of time you know you're just gonna let everyone in tier two tier three and tier four fix fix games so you know but Isik have continued and i gotta say they did get one person that uh, i was kind of like well it's about time on this one this is the headline Isik suspends ukrainian quartet for two years over match fixing charges you won't know many of these players if you particularly if you don't follow anything outside of tier one you will only know one of these players but uh, the players are native there he is playing for Boom Shake now, 22. Dark Side uh, with now no team, 25. Throne playing for Speedrunners, 28 there. And of course, the name you do recognize, Sensei, as of today, as we'll get to, no team. Now, Sensei is the one who stands out because he was one of the players that were on that uh, Akuma roster who in 2021, they were the team that... I'm, fuck it, I'll just say it. They cheated in that CIS uh, qualifier for the major. They clearly used some form of radar cheat, although I don't think it is. You see, people, people think it's a radar hack, and people like Harumi perpetuate that. It's worse than that. What they do is somebody at the company who has access to a clean stream that they give to betting companies and data companies collection companies somebody gives that to the players they can then watch it minimized or put it up on a secondary monitor and so they know in real time where everyone is on the map and that's what they're using when they use radar that's what they're doing they're not really using a third party hack there's none of that going on it's just you just get a clean feed of the stream and then there is zero chance that it can be detected because you're not injecting anything into the game those guys 
happened to be so bad at it. They were it was so apparent what they were doing because first of all, when Navi were like number one in the world, and when like Gambit were number three in the world, they beat Navi. And not only did they beat Navi, they neutralized Simple, Simple, uh, Simple bottom fragged against them. And then I think they had an overtime loss against Gambit and then like beat nearly everyone else. And when people started calling them out, suddenly that's when they were just normal players again. In the, in the interim, there was all this footage of like guys like Sensei and Dem QQ like looking up, you know, and stuff like this. It was pretty fucking cringe, all things told. So anyway, I did a video about it, a video that got me death threats because we took the coach of the team and we put his head, because they're called Akuma. So we did a video called Akuma Matata. I took the coach's head and put it on the pig's body, Pumba, from The Lion King. And he didn't understand that it was a reference to The Lion King in the song. He thought it was a reference to the fact that I, I was walked into his brain and knew that he was sensitive about his weight. And I found that out when I interviewed that nutter who worked at Isik for a week <laughs> and then accused the entire tier one scene of cheating. And then doxed me. So, or doxed my phone number. One of my burner phone numbers. So, that was interesting. So, anyway, that's what he was famous for. And ever since that happened, Isik have said they've been investigating Akuma, Project X, and Majesty, which are the, these are the three Ukrainian teams that have all had supposed issues involving the same group of players. You'll remember Project X's name. Uh, when that came up, when there were strange betting patterns uh, around some of the games that they had played as well. And, of course, in an article I wrote for Deserto, Wonderful was accused of match-fixing in this as well, back when he was at uh, Team... Well, when he was at Monty, I think it was, they sort of cut him because of what was going on with the allegations. I can't remember. Or was it Spirit? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. The, the bottom line is that Yarabo tried to blackmail them into paying him some money or he was going to leak details. And that was how Wonderful got accused. But so far, nothing's come of it from Isik. They haven't issued a penalty. And obviously, he's just joined Na'Vi. So maybe in two, three years, we'll hear something about him as well. Anyway, these guys have been banned uh, for theoretically two years and... Again, if you know anything about these players uh, reputationally behind the scenes, it's not a moment too soon, but I dread to think how many games they've been involved in that were dodgy in some way. And fair enough, uh, Sensei did get cut from his team. His team put out a strangely professional statement from for you know that kind of region and that tier. And you can see, in response to news this morning from the Esports Integrity Commission, ESIC, uh, regarding Dimitro Sensei Shvorak, we have terminated his contract with immediate effect. It is vital to the esports ecosystem that tournaments, events, and general competitive play is contested in a fair manner. And we as a business will not accept any member being involved in anything that puts this at risk. We stand by the rest of our team and are doing everything to support them at this time. So, you know, well done. He actually got cut. Uh, I don't know if we'll ever see him again, but then at the end of the day, people keep picking up these players. And as we'll get to now with Joel, I have a feeling you will probably see one or two of those players again in one or two of these shit, you know, gambling company uh, tournaments that they run online, which only seem to exist for the purposes of dubious betting. This was the other e sick moment uh, that happened uh, in, since the last stream, and this uh, came about today. Uh, a lot of people misinterpreted this because... Esports fans don't send their best. So just to give you a quick update as well. Joel uh, was a, a promising young Swedish player who'd played again on Monty and I think a number of other teams before moving to Godsent. Not long after being in Godsent, uh, there were rumours circulating about him being a potential match fixer. Again, that Yarabo guy had named him specifically and had gone to Monty and attempted to blackmail them, saying he had incriminating evidence, evidence he shared with me, which amounted to someone who wasn't Joel saying, I know Joel match fixed because i offered him money to match fix 
which obviously you can't use at all. Anyway, when Isik originally banned Joel, they said, look, you bet on your own games, and in those games you played badly, uh, played poorly. That looks really, really bad. Uh, we've got uh, an, on a number of instances, in, you know, 17 bets on CSGO matches, not just your own. There was only two involving his own team, but he did bet on other teams, and that's obviously against the code of conduct that you agree to. Anyway, fast forward to now, and all of a sudden, that lengthy ban that they'd issued uh, is now only going to be until January the 6th. A day that will live on in infamy, Jan for different reasons. January 6th, and they said, it, 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 and this reeks to me of Isik backpedaling again. When determining the length of Joel's ban, Isik considered several factors, including his assistance with the investigation. According to the esports watchdog, the player provided uh, crucial information pertinent to ongoing inquiries. His full and candid cooperation was helpful to Isik's ongoing investigations, Isik said. Consequently, we have decided that a reduction in Mr. Homeland's suspension is warranted and aligns with our principles of fairness in justice. Moreover, Joel's genuine contrition and commitment to seeking professional help were mitigating factors considered by Isik, which stated that the player showed traits indicating he, is, he suffered from a gambling addiction. Throughout the initial discussions where Mr. Homeland was supported by skilled legal counsel, he acknowledged his gambling issues and agreed to pursue uh, professional counselling and treatment, E6 said. So, quite clearly, again, a player has lawyered up and got E6 to kind of back down. It's kind of crazy uh, to me because ultimately, I think Joel's one of those players where it's like, if you place bets on your own team at any point, the financially desirable outcome there is to lose. And whether or not you deliberately pay, play bad, that is in your brain. And so it's the one thing you should never do. It's not exclusive because obviously you can have insider knowledge of uh, placing other bets. You could be placing those bets on behalf of somebody else who's match fixing. A pro player should never place a bet. And I'm getting increasingly bored, honestly, of the I'm a gambling addict defense. It plays very well to the peanut gallery. You know why? Because they were like, gamble bad. Gambler, gambling ruins lives. Then they open a case. <laughs> they open a case and go, oh, I'll get a knife next time. The average esports fan really doesn't have a particularly sophisticated or nuanced view about gambling, and they just view it as entirely bad, destroy our lives. It's the only thing that's keeping esports upright, by the way, uh, is the betting sponsorships. You will notice increasingly, not a lot of names, is there, that you have to remember in your list of esports sponsors. Just betting sites. So anyway... He bet on his own games. He played poorly in some of those games. Although, maybe just coincidentally, maybe not, maybe on purpose. That's as good as match fixing for me. So, I believe that at that instance, it's it reminds me of when Rio Ferdinand... Rio Ferdinand did a ban for essentially failing a drugs test. But he never failed a drugs test. He just... When they came to test him, he missed the test. And because, obviously, you could be doing anything, taking stuff to get it out of your system, taking other stuff to, to disguise it, you have to be punished as if you failed. And that's what happened to Rio Ferdinand, and he did a lengthy ban, despite being one of the best fucking players uh, for England, for Manchester United. So when a player places bets on their own games and those games just happen to go the way the bets were, Sorry, I, I, you have to be punished as if you're match fixed. So this is, again, really fucking toothless from Isik, which shouldn't come as a surprise to any of you. You will notice they quite explicitly said he sat in there with a lawyer, said he had a gambling problem, said he definitely placed the bets, and that's the other key component. The only good thing Isik have really achieved here is at least they got him to confess to breaking some of the rules, but he's only banned he's only banned to January over it. And now everyone's gonna go, and you'll notice from the resultant Reddit thread, the response isn't, well, you know, I guess E6's kinda toothless. 
if you're from the CIS region, you think you think Joel's a good guy. You think Isak has ruined his career. He's got away with it. Be, be under no fucking illusion. You don't place bets on your own game unless your intent is to lose those games. There's just no fucking way. I don't believe it. I don't believe anyone's that stupid to be like, oh, but if I win, I win. But if I lose, I win. Because I get money. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way in this day and age anyone actually fucking feels that way. So here's the lengthy post from Joel. We're all prone to making mistakes, right? He's made a ton. 17, probably the tip of the iceberg. Heard loads of shit about this kid behind the scenes. But I'm accountable only for my own. There are moments I wish had never occurred as they've left a lasting impact on both my career and my overall well-being. I battled gambling addiction and contrary to misconceptions, I never utilised insider information for personal gain. Instead, I faced losses, not gains, in this struggle. You know, imagine that, right? I never used insider information and I lost all the bets. Why should that ever be a defence? ridiculous i take pride in actively addressing and combating this issue within myself my hope is that my words influence others especially gamers urging them not to make the mistakes i've done particularly in a scene that has been heavily shaped and propelled by gambling i never match fixed and i'm glad he sick acknowledged that and that all of you who read this can understand how hard it is to go through this it had a prof i i just don't believe it I'm saying I don't believe it. That's opinion-based. It had a profound impact on my mental well-being. Few were willing to join me in face-it matches. Oh, no, boo-hoo. And I faced inappropriate messages frequently during games, leading to feelings of deep depression and sadness. Simultaneously, I was in my final year of the demanding natural science program in senior high school, by far the hardest program to choose while playing for God's sent. Balancing professional counter-strike and academics for sacrifices, mainly in sleep and personal life. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to being an adult. You're not getting anything out of me for that, mate. I dedicated myself entirely to practices and official matches, striving for consistency. A challenge I openly addressed within the team and with our mental coach. The pressure to perform consistently at a high level, especially for young players, weighed heavily on me. I faced burnout symptoms, resorting to excessive caffeine consumption, just to navigate through each day and give my best. I found myself unfairly targeted by false accusations, libel and slander, which have had a detrimental impact on my career. I want to make it clear I'm taking steps to address these unwarranted attacks. Moving forward, I aim to find resolution and peace, seeking legal recourse against those responsible for spreading falsehoods. My focus remains on moving past these challenges and reclaiming a sense of fairness and integrity in my life. I've always found it challenging to openly display my emotions, often linking it to a fear of appearing vulnerable or weak. ESIC e e has granted me a second chance, and I'm committed to seizing it. I'm determined to embark on a path of redemption and make the most of this opportunity. And, yeah, by the way, if he wrote any of that, I'd be incredibly surprised. You know, there's there's tons of stuff that doesn't add up. You're a gambling ad addict, but you're only betting on esports, are you? Well, what do you mean? You've, only, you've never used inside information. You've only took losses. Well, we know that's not true. <laughs> so, I don't know. We and um, keep in mind we're only looking at like seven, well, nineteen in total. So, yeah. But no, lawyer's done a great job writing this letter for him. I guess really, really full, full service. Just ridiculous. And as I said, you're never going to convince me. Maybe I'm one of the people you're going to take recourse against. Well, good luck with that. I don't believe you. And so that really is the end of that. I mean, E6 sort of, again, are signalling to the world, incredibly loud, that just get a lawyer. <laughs> if E6 ever hits you with a punishment, just get a lawyer. If you can't afford a lawyer, it's going to stick. If you can't afford a lawyer, you're going to be back in a few months. It's just absolutely ridiculous. We just don't have a governing body sort of capable of any practical level of enforcement in in this spot across the board. Crazy.